Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about some contemporary romances I am dying to read. This is going to be a collaboration with my good friend Sam Samantha from Books with Samantha. I love her so much. She's currently also posting a video every single day in December. I pray for both of us. But I'm really excited to see what books she has on her list and I have quite a few to talk about today because I am excited to read like all of these. There's quite a large number on here and I think this is kind of gonna be possibly like a guide for me next year. Um, books that I'm gonna try to prioritize in the contemporary romance sphere at least because um, I don't read just contemporary romances but I've definitely been in the mood for them and all of these sound so stinking good. So I'm very excited to check these out as well as the ones that Samantha is gonna be talking about. I can't wait to see what books she's excited to read. I'm gonna go check it out right when she posts it. So I'll link her video down below if you wanna go check it out. I highly recommend it. Samantha is like everything. The first one that I have is Give Me Butterflies by Jillian Meadows. This book has been recommended to me so many times by so many people and I love that. I love when people go out of their way to recommend me a book. I feel so honored that someone would think of me when reading a book. They're like, oh, Avery would love this. I'm really excited for this one. I think our characters end up meeting at a museum or something that both of them work at. Something, I think she possibly works with butterflies or something like that, which I love butterflies. So I am all down for this. I've heard amazing things about it as well as the um, holiday book that she has written as well so good. It looks like we have a grumpy hero. There's anxiety representation. I am sold. I'm also dying to read Home Run Proposal by Maren Moore and this is solely because of my friend Tabitha over at Instagram. Her recommending this book makes me want to read it so bad. First of all, the cover. Can we talk about this cover please? I am obsessed with it and I like I love I love all the pink. I love the baseball. Mm, yes, and I haven't read a good baseball romance in quite a long time. So I am completely sold on this as well. Apparently this is a pining romance. This is our heroine's best friend's older brother. She's always had a crush on and he's like a hot shot baseball player. I do have a few physical books as well. So first is Unlikely Match by Laura Bradbury. This book looks so good. It has own voices representation for um, organ transplant, I'm pretty sure. And it looks so stinking cute. I think it's a workplace enemies to lovers. <laughs> I love those so much. And I think the heroine has a either autoimmune disease or a disease of some sort that requires her to have an organ transplant, just like our author in the book. And uh, you know me, I am sucked into anything with own voices representation. I saw the cover for this one and just like needed it in my life. This is Meeting Millie by Claire Ashton. Like, look at the background. Look at the both of them on the cover. Yes, please. Millie and Charlotte are two best friends who live in Oxford together. However, something happens to their friendship and they haven't seen each other in 10 years. Then Charlotte ends up coming back and Millie is waiting right there to start their friendship back up again. However, the reason why their friendship broke up is because something happened between the two of them all those years ago. So Friends to Lovers Romances are everything to me. So I definitely want to read that one. A Five Minute Life by Emma Scott is my next one. I got this one at Book Bonanza. It's an exclusive special edition, which ugh, I love It's signed. I don't even know what this is about, but like I have it displayed on that shelf normally on my shelves because it's absolutely beautiful. And I'm like, I need to read it already if I'm displaying it. Okay, this is about Thea and she was in a car accident that stole her parents and left her with the second worst documented case of amnesia in the world. Now she only has minutes of experiences of consciousness of life before memory is wiped clean. It sounds like 50 First Dates, <laughs> that movie. Oh my gosh. So she's an artist. It actually does sound like 50 First Dates because she, <laughs> She draws and paints in that one too. Oh my gosh. Okay, this the hero's name is Jim and he is on autopilot. A foster kid shuffled around the system since birth. He's lived his entire life without knowing love and it's taken its toll until he's learned to fight back, carry his armor and keep his head down. Working as an orderly in the Blue Ridge Sanitarium deep in the Virginia countryside, Jim looked up and found Thea. When Thea has the chance to break free of her five minute prison with a risky experimental surgery, it could lead them both to an epic love story they never thought possible or 
one that could require the ultimate sacrifice. Now I get the cover. I get it because <laughs> she's an artist. I saw this one going around bookstagram a few months ago and still need to pick it up. This is Sight Unseen. This one's by Keisha Thompson. It's on Kindle Unlimited and I think it's like love is blind vibes if i'm not mistaken yeah okay so evelyn and quincy are both on a reality show where they're wanting to find their perfect match but her soulmate will be picked by a panel of experts and she doesn't get to meet him until they are face to face at the end of the aisle <gasps> So married at first sight, like married at first sight. <laughs> Quincy, however, doesn't believe in the concept of soulmates and the chances his arranged marriage will work for him are slim to none. But he's messed up his love life for the past 35 years. Maybe a group of experts can do a better job. Mm. Looks fun. I am a sucker for those kinds of reality dating shows. So of course I think I'm gonna really enjoy. <laughs> one in a book. Next I have Take Me Down by Avery Kingston. I met this author at, um, what's it called? Wanderlust. There you go, Wanderlust. Like a year and a half ago, I want to say. Um, and yeah, this one is signed as well. She was so sweet. She was so sweet and she has um, amazing representation in almost every single one of her books. I've read a few of them. I've read two, I think. And this is the only one that I have physically that I have not read yet. So I want to get onto it. And I think our hero in here is a radio show host and he is visually impaired. So again, disability rap. Look at the cover of this next one. It looks so cute. This is Taking the Cake by Natalia Williams. Anything that has baking or cakes in it, give it to me right now. So it looks like Sabrina is a popular wedding cake baker. So the hero of this story is Gray and he comes back to the small town that Sabrina is in, which is called New River. And he's back to take care of his grandfather. And he's back in town to take care of his sick grandfather. And then when a chance encounter between Sabrina and Gray at the local coffee shop leads to an unexpected friendship, Sabrina decides it might be time to open herself up to love again. But their budding friendship almost ends before it even begins when she discovers that not only does Gray know her ex, he's set up to be his groomsman. Oh no. And when the friendship starts to veer into more than friends territory, they both struggle with the emerging feelings. It looks really cute. Like, look at this cover with the cake. The Problem with Dating by Brittany Cherry is one that I really wanna read. <laughs> um, I just wanna read anything by Brittany. I don't even know what this is about at all. I don't, I don't wanna know, I don't need to know. It's just a Brittany book. I need to read a Brittany book <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Cause I love her so much. She's like one of my favorite human beings in the entire world. Next is Lucky Hit by Hannah Cohen. I know Caitlin is gonna love that I have a Hannah Cohen book on this list. Um, but I do really wanna read the series that Caitlin hypes up more, but I think it's second gen or a spinoff to this one. The first one being Lucky Hit. So I want to get started with the first ones because I don't wanna miss anything if it's second gen. Like I like knowing what's going on. I'm like, Ooh, I know who that person is. Ooh, I know who that person is. So that's why I want to read this one. It's the first book in the Swift Hat Trick trilogy. This one's about Oakley and Ava. Oakley is a hockey player who really wants to make it on the NHL. And Ava absolutely hates hockey players. I'm interested to see how that's going to work out if she really hates hockey players, but he plays hockey. Off the Hook by Julia Olivia definitely caught my eye on Bookstagram. Okay, I think I saw one of those trope things with all the trope arrows about this book. And I was like, ooh. You don't need to say anything else, honey. Here they are listed out for you. Okay, you have Grumpy Sunshine, Single Dad, Nanny Romance, Ex Fiance's Older Brother, Forced Proximity, Coastal Small Town, and A Slow Burn Hot Romance. Mm -hmm. that, if that doesn't hook you in, I don't know what will. Apparently this is the first book in the Never Harbor series, which is a standalone contemporary romance series inspired by Peter Pan. Are you joking? The hero needs a nanny. Enter his brother's ex-fiance, Wendy Darling, who is an elementary school teacher with a free summer. And the hero's just like, oh, I can't be with her, but he wants to be with her so badly, of course. Next is Some Kind of Wonderful by Anita Kelly. This one has been recommended to me, I think by Chloe Lisa herself and by my lovely friend Zay over at Witty Reads. Both of them really love this book. I think they end up meeting on a hiking trail and um, they catch each other's eye. So that's all I really know. I'm gonna go in blind and um, I wanna find the audiobook of this one because I heard it's really good as well. Another one with desserts. Okay, you have desserts for stressed people. Me. <laughs> by Lizita Lorini. This is a secret identity romantic comedy. 
and the first book in a series. It says nothing brings stressed people together like desserts. Mm-hmm, you're right. Okay, so this is about Heaven Wilson, who creates a fake profile on the app her cheating boyfriend is using to find hookups. But when she unexpectedly matches with Shane H, a man who seems as sweet as the big treats he tempts her with, revenge becomes the least of her problems. A more pressing issue, not falling for the man she's catfishing until she can ditch her unfaithful boyfriend. And then she learns that Shane is her very intimidating new boss. <laughs> And he has no idea she's the girl whose messages leave him craving more every night. Okay, we're gonna see how that one goes because I don't really love catfishing, but I'm hoping that the the desserts make up for that. Okay. <laughs> Another hockey romance is Power Play by Maria Louise. Apparently this hero is NHL's hottest goalie and the heroine is a sports journalist on the verge of losing it all. The heroine stick in the mud boss is determined to make her life hell. He sits in her office and lays down an ultimatum. Get an exclusive interview with NHL's golden boy, Duke Harrison, or she'll be out of a job. No way is she letting her future rest on the broad shoulders of a goalie who's three seasons past his prime. She's got eight days to convince Duke that the loyal fans of the Cambridge Tribune are dying to know about his life on and off the ice. Eight days to face off against the sexy man who's hellbent on blocking her shot at every turn. The tropes for this one says low angst, quirky characters, and hot heroes. I haven't seen this one around, but I think I saw it on Instagram and... Uh, Hockey romance, okay? I'm, those suck me in. Next, I wanna read this one in like the colder seasons, definitely giving me those cold vibes is Winter's Eve Then and Now and Always by A.E. Valdez. The only issue is like, it's like 580 pages. It's so long. <laughs> I have a really hard time reading long books because I think about how many shorter books I can read when I read that long book. But I gotta stop thinking about this because this book could be like my new favorite book of all time, but I'm putting it off just because of the page count. I gotta stop doing that, Avery. After walking away from everything he loved a decade ago, Winter King no longer recognizes the man he's become, the man who tried burying the pain of his past underneath a billion dollar smile, women and work. When an unexpected turn of fate brings him face to face with his ex fiance Eve Valentine, he can't hide any longer from the woman of his past, the emptiness of his present and the tenuous hope of his future. Eve Valentine never imagined she'd be forced to face Winter King again. And then her best friend falls in love with his brother. Brother. He says it's kismet, but when she feels like it's pure, unadulterated torture, unalter, un, I can't say that word, unadulterated torture to her still broken heart, the last thing she intends to offer him is forgiveness. Making a promise to move on, Eve tries, but when everything she's worked for is jeopardized, the man who used to be her king is her only option. A favor, an outrageous bid, and a date can't lead to a second chance. Can it? Doesn't that sound so good? It's just so long. This one reeled me in. So hardcore. This is Next to You by DeLucy Dameron. I hope I'm not butchering that. I am so sorry. Casey ended up experiencing a life altering accident. I believe he is now a wheelchair user. And when he moves back to his small town of River Hollow, his meddling sister ropes him into managing her shop. He's forced to work with the most skittish woman he's ever met, Shyla. She's interesting and beautiful, but clearly can't stand him, which makes working with her near impossible. Single mom, Shyla, moved far away from her past to the little town of River Hollow for peace and quiet. But when she finds out that her new boss is a man, she knows peace is the last thing she'll get. Even though Casey is confined physically, he's still strong and moody, and she knows will eventually spell disaster for her. But when Casey befriends Shayla's son, Jack, she starts to see him in a different light. When pain from the past starts to rear its ugly head, Shyla must determine if love really can cover multitudes of sins. Again, another book with disability rep, like, yes. And like, I wanna read more single mom romances. I read a lot of single dad ones, but I wanna read some single mom ones as well. Unsteady by Peyton Corinne is my next one. Oh, you know what always sucks me in with a book? If the hero's name is Reese. If you know, you know. <laughs> So this one's about Reese 
and Sadie. Reese is a hockey player who experienced a concussion that has changed his life. He has nightmares and panic attacks every time he attempts to skate and wonders if he will ever play again or if he will even want to. This is a college romance, by the way, so both characters are in college. Um, so Sadie is currently drowning in debt, custody hearings for her younger brothers and skating practices. She's just trying to make the next day. A spitfire figure skater known for her bad attitude and frequent disappearing acts. She has a reputation on campus and it's not a pretty one. When she accidentally witnesses one of the Golden Boy Hockey's captain's panic attacks and attempts to help him, a strange sort of understanding strikes up between them. I don't need to read anything else. That already sounds so good. I want to pick it up right now. Like I, I think I need to, I need to pick that up right now. <laughs> that sounds so good. I love that dynamic between these two characters already. Next is The Impossible Princess by Kira Dominguez. I think I saw, this is the first book in this series, by the way. Um, but I think I saw the cover for the second book on Instagram and I was like, oh my gosh, what book is that? That is stunning. Um, and then I was like, okay, I gotta read book number one. Um, and it looks like the this is a princess bodyguard romance. Yeah, if you don't know me, I, I love those. <laughs> this cover reeled me in, of course. This is Between the Vines by Grace Elena. Looks like it takes place on a ranch. Love it. This is about Camilla and Bennett. Camilla moves to a small town in Tennessee and she's known for being very sunny and sunshiny. Then she meets Bennett, who is fed up with the world and wants peace. He lives on a remote farm, miles from the nearest neighbor. He'd rather round up cattle than hear about a new tourist attraction that pops up in his hometown, especially the vineyard that was brought down the road. What happens when the least likely of two people meet and end up falling for another more than they intend to? So it looks like she's opening up a vineyard down the street from him. And then the last book that I have today is On Thin Ice by L.A. Cotton. I've had a few of my friends reach out to me, like quite a few, which I'm so grateful for. Again, I love when friends think of me and recommend me books because this book apparently has celiac disease representation. It's a hockey romance and that's all I know. I do know that it is the second book in a series, so I do wanna go read book one, but I more so wanna read this one obviously because it has celiac disease representation. And if y'all don't know me, I have celiac disease and I love, I, I want to see myself accurately represented in a book with my celiac disease. So I really want to check this one out. I have been forewarned that like, it's not too much touched upon, but it's still like there, there's still representation. So I'm excited. Anyways, there you have it. Those were, I think 15 or 20, I don't know, a lot of books <laughs> that are contemporary romances that I am excited to read. Quite a few of these, if not all of them are on Kindle Unlimited. So go check that out. Let me know down below if you are interested in any of these books or if you have already read them. What are your thoughts on them? I would love to know. Also let me know what books you are excited to read next year. Another thing I would love to know. Give me all the recommendations. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any hockey related emoji in the comment section down below because we had quite a few hockey romances on this list. Can you tell I'm in a mood? Okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see you all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.